welcome to the 8 pm show on our show today we have a very vibrant individual with us his name is sultan khalfan al abdali and if that didn't ring a bell let me say it this way it's sultan snk right okay so sultan first of all thank you so much for joining us on the show today it's an absolute pleasure uh now i met sultan uh, i think 12 or 15 years ago yeah. and today he is a, a a very good filmmaker but back then he was into break dancing right so exactly. how did this how did the journey go from how how did you go from break dance to filmmaking uh, okay so how did i shift from break dance to filming actually during the, my, my time in break dancing i was always a, like a photographer my hobby right. was to do photos you know right. like take pictures of my group and the, the, whenever we have like a battle or something Um, match between each other mm -hmm. with my friends we I would like to film that right because we had a website so I want to put something in website so I was always the behind the scene cameraman you know right so I was always uh, into filming since uh, breakdance day but only it clicked my mind like I wanted to take it more seriously when I went to USA and I met some young uh, uh, people filmmakers. yeah filmmakers there they were filming while we are doing the shows in, right. in USA right. we went to do a show so they were filming and then showing it to us and posting it in some places like YouTube and and they told me they make money out of that like hmm so i was like hmm, yeah, maybe who makes more money the break dance or the films uh, yeah and then i was interesting because i already loved to do pictures and videos right, right? so i i sat down with them and i got to learn what what kind of cameras they using and all that And when I came back to Oman, I wanted to take that more further. So that my is story is that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you wanted to basically see how it is to be on the other side of the camera. Yes. Well, believe it or not, when uh, Sultan and me first met, we were on a, on a shoot together. Shoot. We were supposed to do a project, and he and his friend were the break dancers. I obviously. I have two, two left feet. I cannot dance. But you learned some few, some steps. He that tried. Let, we, let me let me let me put, put it that way. Sultan <laughs> tried to teach me, and uh, we had the photographer. She was good. <laughs> She was no good. one's gonna believe that, Sultan. <laughs> so they were so quick with their moves. They just went. Ch -ch 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 -ch. The photographer. This um, this was like 12, 15 years. Like the photographer literally had to be like, okay, guys, do Slow me a down. favor. Pause. Can you just <laughs> hold that pose and I'll click a picture because it was impossible. And what did they tell me? Antra. Just jump. That's it. We don't expect anything from you. Just jump. I, I, I could do that. So that was our first story. And I remember uh, even back then you were interested in in seeing how it is on the other side. You were very curious as to how do I look in the pictures or how how is how are the videos coming out and yeah. things like that. So so that's I mean, when did you get your first camera? When did you tr get your hands on your first equipment? So so my first camera was. Uh a long story actually i had a camera before that a casio camera mm. small one that can take like 30 seconds video mm. and mm. it will stop and also can take like a digital pictures and it was so much limited it's a small camera until i decided to do like a proper film right. i wanted to do a film about our breakdance because what was happening during that time when we were doing the breakdance we were a bit famous in oman So every pretty famous. <laughs> so so many magazines in Oman, local magazine would want to do interview with us. Right. So every almost every month we have an interview and the same questions again. How did you start? What are the challenges, you know, uh, how what do you think about this? It's the same questions. So I thought, okay, I repeated this like 10 times now already. Once and for all, and I, video it. I, yeah, I'm tired of repeating it again and again. So I thought, okay, I can make a movie about a real, real story, how we started and how things went during our break dance. And whenever uh, like a journalist come and ask me, I say, hey, take this link, Here's the video. go watch it, go watch it. You, it's in YouTube. Everything Just go watch me. it. All the answers are there. So I wanted to do that. So I decided to buy a good camera, but that was a mistake. And I remember when we were speaking earlier, you said that it was a beautiful mistake. So much beautiful mistake because that mistake. Why do you say that? Because that I call it beautiful mistake because because of it today I am who I am and I have as much. Anything I have today is basically because of that mistake I did. So 
Tell me the day that you brought that camera home. What exactly happened? What made you buy the camera? What was the story? So, at that time I was very beginner, right? So I told you, I just had a small Casio camera, uh, was taking it for hobby only, mm -hmm. and suddenly wanted to move to a professional. So I thought, any professional needs a like a very, very high, fancy equipment, fancy like an expensive equipment. equipment. Yes, so I thought that if you have a good camera, you can automatically you will do a good video, like a Hollywood movie or something. <laughs> I thought, but okay. But is that the case? No way. No, right? Yeah. Now that you're into it, you know that's not the no, case. No, not the case at all. And what I have now is not even half price of that camera. But oh. I can do so magic with it. So how expensive was this camera that you first bought? The first camera I bought is 4,300 reals. Whoa. And you had no idea about what to do? Not even how to turn it on and off. Okay. And why, <laughs> why did you buy it? I just thought if I buy an expensive camera, I'll be a good videographer. Like I, I can do a... Hollywood movies, as I said. And how did your family react? That was, no, no. That's why I call it mistake. But, <laughs> you know, when I bought the camera, at, at the time I'm buying the camera, I thought I'm buying like a, you know, like a, a piece of, uh, you know, something from heaven. I thought like, I have this, done. My life is going to be easy and everything is going to be smooth, you know. And I'm a videographer, I'm a filmmaker, you know, I'm like someone from Hollywood, I have this camera. That's what I thought. But when I bought it and went back home and my family knew about it, knew that I spent all my saving money for that instead of going and buying a car because that money I was saving to buy a car. Right. But when they knew that, no, he actually used all the money for this, Oh, <laughs> it, it was like didn't feel like heaven then, did it? No, it turns to hell. Like <laughs> they made me feel like I bought the hell. You know, like blah 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 blah. It, oh, yeah, they throwing bombs on me. This was like a why. You know, I need to <laughs> head gear and you know, to block to block all the bombs coming from my family. You know, like oh, how come you went and spent all your money for this and a lot of bad words <laughs> saying to me. You know, I cannot say them now. But they were like so angry at me. Why did I spend all my money for that? So I thought it's a mistake. But today only, it changed the name to Beautiful Mistake because right. I noticed that, okay, that camera did all this. And this was how many years back? 10. Ten exactly. Years back. 10 years 11 back. now because it was 2010. Right, right. So now it's 12, yeah, uh, 22. Right. So it's. Whoa, yeah. long time ago. And, and how do you think the industry has changed? now like in, in the in the past 10 to 12 years when you started when you first started as opposed to now yeah when, when i started i was not good much so and also i didn't have a lot of people knowing me but you had a very good camera <laughs> yeah i had a very good camera but you know i wanna it, it was only my idea to do movies like right. to do films hmm. like short uh, movies and all that Correct. but I joined the Musket Short Film Festival in that year, uh, 2010, or 11, sorry, right. and I won first place. So after winning that, after winning that, I quit doing films, like doing short films or documentaries. I started having clients, no, people stuff, wants yeah. to pay me money to do their videos, like shops and right, uh, right. companies, and so I quit doing films and I started doing more commercial. Like, Right. That kind of thing. So, in the beginning, I had like two, three people only dealing with me, and then they come higher, higher until maybe 2016, 17. I, I was like on my peak, you know. Like it was almost every day filming. Every day I have. And a you client. enjoyed it. Of course, I love it. And, and what? And still, I'm loving it. You, you still know? love it. And what do you think sets you apart from other filmmakers? Or why do your clients love you so much? Let me put it that way. Okay, I, I don't I don't believe I'm a good filmmaker still. You're being modest. No, no, no. I'm I'm, I'm being honest, you know, that I, I can see others, like you can see mm -hmm. them in social media and, and many other places. There there is a lot of people uh, in Amman, they can do better films than me. But maybe I think the only thing that makes me special and makes my clients want to come back to me. Hopefully, I don't know. But I think it's my Personally, how, how I, I talk to them, that. how I deal with them, how friendly I am. I always love to make a client uh, see me as a friend, like a brother, 
you know, like uh, I, I would try my best not to argue with the client always. You form a bond with them and I think that is essential to carry out any project. Mm. Uh, so I think that's why what makes me different from other Perfect. filmmakers and that's why maybe some, some people still love working with me. I absolutely agree to that. Well, on that one, what we'll do is we'll take a short break and we'll be right back for more with Sultan. Sure. Welcome back to the 8pm show. So we were in conversation with Sultan SNK. Right, so Sultan, tell me what is uh, the best thing you like about filming? Well, I like filming because uh, every day you go filming, you meet new people. And you like people. I love people. And also the people that when they meet a uh, filmmaker, like a videographer or filmmaker or photographer, straight away they become friendly with him because they know this guy will have to show me good so I have to be good to him. Right? <laughs> so you feel loved already from the first second, you know. When you There's just, a reason for the love. Yeah, so as soon as you enter the, the room or oh, he's the videographer, he's the guy, you know. So everybody like, hi, 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 you know. You start to feel like loved here. And of course, if you're in a place where you are loved, you will love that place. Right? I agree. I agree so, so that's why I love filming because and because, because you get to interact with people, right? Yes, yes. All right, and tell me in about, a good way. In a good way, of course. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> and tell me about your crew. Uh, is there ever any drama on set and how do you handle it? Okay, so my crew are very like, good people, more than myself. I don't know how good I am, but they are better than me 100 this times. This is for the crew. <laughs> yeah, I, I love my crew. We are always working like very smooth. We've never had any problems uh, between, uh, between each other. But there is a drama happened once, and I can't forget that. Okay. It Tell wasn't us about the it. crew. It was just me. Okay. I was the main problem of this, <laughs> okay. uh, of this drama, you know. So we went for filming in Jabal Akhdar. Okay. Uh, somewhere up there in Jabal Akhdar, we had to film a building, a new construction building. Uh, so before we went to do the filming, we had to go for safety. Safety, safety checks around the area, yeah. And talk, breaking like a, and everything. Yeah, Correct. like a workshop, a small safety right. workshop. And then we will be able to start the right. shooting. So I was with my crew and everybody there. And they told us about it. And there were a crane in the middle of this project. There is a very long crane, right? Mm -hmm. Crane for yes. construction. Yes. So uh, I said to the guy, uh, Can I go up the crane? Because I didn't have drone at that time. It was what? a long time. So I said, I want to go up there so I can film. Aerial view. <laughs> yeah, aerial view, you know, looks like a crane when we turn around and we can spin. I said, yeah, that's a very creative oh idea, you know, and it's good. So I was happy. Yes, I will go up there and it's, I'll get a nice shot from up. I want to do good video. Always uh, when I do video, I'm trying my best to, to give a good video. You know? Right. Client, uh, make happy my client. I told of you course. I like to work with them. So, uh, we, uh, I told them I want to do that last at the sunset time. Right. So that time it was morning. So I shoot all the project down here and there. We did a lot of B-rolls and all that, interviews. And when the sunset time came, I said, okay, now I want to go to the crane. I thought, I thought that the crane will bring the, like, uh, the something like lift down and I go inside and, on it. and that's what I thought. Right. But I saw them suddenly coming to me, giving me like a vest, like life, life jacket and hook, you know. So I was, why do I need all this? You know, I'm just going to go with that, right? And then no. after they put the helmet on me and now, can you carry your bag with you? I was like, sure, I'm just going to sit yeah. and go up. Are you sure you're going to take your bag? I said, yeah, yeah I, I have lenses and things in there. I need the bag with me. And then they said, okay, so uh, please, this is the stair and you have to... You had to... Oh. And then they teach me how to put the hook on the every five, four steps. So I was like, is this the way to go up? <laughs> Don't tell me you actually did it. 
Of course, I have to, because the problem is the problem is you already got the client excited. <laughs> yes, and the, the person I met in the safety time when right. we were giving a safety brief, it was a manager, the project manager. Right. But he left, so he's expecting me to be up there sometime. You know, in the final video, he's expecting to see something from area. Oh like my. From top. But at the sunset, he was not there. Only the normal worker gave me this. I said, sir, you have, you have to go up. You brought this upon yourself. Yes, <laughs> and I was like, what did I do to myself? No way. <laughs> and when I looked, the crane maybe 30, 25 to 30 meters up. It's so high. Like, and this is my first time. Like, I never did something like this before. Even when you take me to an amusement park, like roller coaster or something, I feel dizzy already. Oh. So I was like, I told my crew, that my crew said, okay, we'll come with you. I said, no, 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 no. If I die, die alone. You guys stay here. Send my message to my family. <laughs> I don't want all of us. Tell to everybody I love them. <laughs> so I had to do it. To be honest, when I was going up, I never thought I would come down. I would come back. Oh. Like it was so scary for me. And my friends, you know, like uh, not talking, not saying anything, you know, like looking at me, not blinking, not doing, <laughs> they're just waiting for a second to see me like, you know, any mistake, like sleep or, but I did it up and when I did it, I reached up, they, he, they were with me, a worker who moved the crane right, up right. there, he was in front of me telling me, okay, come, 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 more, more, are you tired, you can sit, there is a places every like, few meters you can sit right. and rest. So I said, no, no, I don't want to I just want to get I just want to reach there and sit <laughs> out there and not, not even come down anymore. <laughs> so anyway, I, I made it and I reached up. And when I reached up, I felt so proud. Like I, I took a lo I took more pictures of me than pictures of the project. <laughs> so I was like, Chee! inside the, what do you call like the cockpit of right, the, the crane? Yes. The, 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 the cabin, room, the, the cabinet or so I was like t giving the camera to the worker there. The yeah, I made it. I'm right. Take, take picture of me, you know. Yes. <laughs> and from top, from go go there and take picture of me, you know. <laughs> so I took so many pictures of me because I wanted to tell everyone, okay, you guys usually go to the like airplane and you know proud. I'm in a cockpit, you know, airplane, you know, with a pilot. I'm on a crane. Everybody <laughs> does that. Like not everybody. Like many people do that. But can anybody go to the crane? <laughs> and take a photo with the, you know, like cabinet of the crane up there. And did you upload all of this on of social course, media? Of course, in my Facebook, in my Instagram, because I'm so proud of that What moment. was the reaction of people? So, yeah, the people like, ah, oh, how come you made it? And, and, but they don't know the story. So they, <laughs> some of them feel, oh, good, just good. They don't know that I struggled to go up there, you know. They <laughs> you didn't it, sign up for this. And they don't know, yeah, uh, uh, what I, I went through, you know. <laughs> you so risked I, your life for yeah, that video. So I was so happy when I was up, I took pictures, and then I did the video, and the client loved the video. But when I went down again, it was more scary to go down because you have to look down. And that's scary. Uh, more scary. <laughs> because when you go down, you're looking down. When you go up, you just, okay, the target is there. You don't see much, you know. But when you go down, you feel how high you are, you know. You feel how, how dangerous. Where <laughs> are you in this life, you know. Like, you're not in the ground, you're somewhere. So you start I, questioning so your I, life decisions. So like, why going, did I do this? Yeah, again, I thought this is another mistake I did for myself. <laughs> But Alhamdulillah, I, I made Here it. Here you are, safe and I'm sound. I'm still safe, Alhamdulillah. After rolling out a great video. And after all, I did good video and the client was so happy for exactly this shot, the aerial shot, the top worth shot. It. He, it was worth it. But I didn't tell the client. I didn't have time to talk to him, <laughs> explain what happened. I need some extra money, you know, because I, I was about to, I saw the death, you know. <laughs> and talking about social media, how do you think social media has helped you and your business? No, social media, for me, it's like uh, something very special and so good. Since social media came, like I, I, I don't need to promote myself anymore, like go call people. Or, right. It become like a place where, I don't know, how do you call, but social media does still do, do help me a lot, like getting my jobs. Almost, I can say, 70% of my job comes from social from media. From social media. Yeah. Right. Like, I, 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 I just put my videos. Like, whenever I shoot with clients or anything, I just... You just put it, it out yeah, there. Yeah, I ask for permissions and they say, okay. Right. You know, so I put it there and then... The, People just Somebody get see it and likes it and I, hey, do you do videos for... Like, yeah, what do you think my profile is all about? Yeah. 
So exactly, it, de it did help me a lot, and it helps me to grow. Right. Grow, and also uh, it helps me to see others hmm. what they're doing. You learn. Yeah, I learn from it. So I see experience. not my challenges, but my the people who I'm, you know. We're also in the industry, in doing the industry. something similar. Yeah, yeah, I see what they're doing. Because I think you, we all learn from each other. Yes. No one knows everything. Exactly. So, okay, one final question before we move on to the rapid fire. What is the advice that you would give to budding filmmakers or even the youth of the country? Mm. Okay, so I have one advice that I, I always wanted this opportunity you know, to say to the public. All yours. <laughs> sometimes I just say to one person, one, mm -hmm. my, my nephew is my my niece at home, I always say to them, you know, life is changing and now we can see that finding a job has become a little bit difficult and you might wait for a long time to, f to find a, like the perfect job, the job that you're looking for, or even right. maybe even any job you cannot find sometimes, right? So I, I really think uh, the generation, the youth now, has to focus on learning skills right during your studies please learn some skills like you know anything could be anything you love you know like uh, not just filmmaking or photography but as in if you like cars you can learn how to fix cars that's always or, useful or you know go to it go, uh, it go kart sports anything because because when you're done with your school or university or college and then you might wait 3 years to find to a perfect job, exactly. To, to find the perfect job, or any job maybe sometime, mm. you know. So during that three years, what are you going to do? Just you need to be home? productive. Yeah, just being home, not doing anything, that creates uh, a, a negative energy to Correct. you. Correct. You know, like okay. anger and You get depressed, you get demotivated. Depressed, yes, and maybe even sick. So I think if you have skills, you know, you can promote apply your it. skill and yes. apply it, you know. You don't have to use it as a job, you know. Sometimes yes. you can just help people uh, fixing their bikes, you know, or taking photos. And you feel productive reading. after doing exactly. it. Exactly. And I think that's key. Using your energy and using it. Also, it could be an income for you, you know. Exactly. And that's what we see in the uh, outside world. Every, every young generation, you know, they do part-time jobs. They fend job. for themselves. Yeah, they, and they, they do part-time jobs. They get a feel of how the, the world is out there. Mm. You know, when you work, because we study, it's all theory. But yes. then we need to apply it, we need to actually... And as you mentioned, uh, get, speaking to people. Yes, you get to speak to people when you do these things, you know, skills, you share skills with others. You, you learn how to speak to people, how to meet with people. So with, later on, when you get a job, you're already into this. You've already done this before during your... Right. Waiting time, right? Right. Yeah. So, so it hasn't gone to waste. Yes. So I think, uh, I, I really think you should focus on skills, developing skills while they're studying, going to school. Right. So I'm against any, any parents who say, you know, okay, now study, stop everything, don't do anything, just focus on Extra studying. curriculars always help. No, I think extra is always good. So right. go sports, do sports. Of course, study is number one, but go do sports, go learn some skills, you know, fixing things, you know, Doing things, uh, exactly. it will exactly. always help you in the future. Yeah. Valuable advice right there from sure. Sultan. All right, Sultan, now we're going to play a little uh, game. It's called a rapid fire. <coughs> I will ask you a bunch of questions. So I have to answer fast? Or immediately, I whatever comes to your mind, yeah, just answer okay, it, okay? okay? Don't worry, it's all simple stuff, okay? Okay, okay first one. Um, who's your idol in filmmaking? In filmmaking is our money guy and his name is Anwar. Anwar, yes. okay, perfect. Anwar? Shout out to Anwar you. Anwar will ask me, of course, <laughs> to be specific. There you go. Specific. That Anwar. All right. Um, what's your favorite kind of movie? Favorite kind of movie? Action. Like action. Especially like, when I say action, it's like a fighting action. Kung Fu. Kung Fu action. Because you were also Type into... One. That's another thing you probably didn't know about mm -hmm. Sultan. He was also... A, uh, you were an instructor. Yeah, 10 years. There you go. Filmmaker, Taekwondo instructor and... Uh, Breakdancer. Break dancer. Wow. Yeah. Keep discovering. All right. Your most memorable filming experience? The one I told you. The, the drama. Crying, the drama. <laughs> the cream. The, I can never forget that day. That was we like, need to see some videos. <laughs> All right, a person who you like working with the most? My crew. Anyone specific? No. <laughs> He's not going to say this on air. He's like, no. no. All of them. <laughs> Tell me behind the scenes. Okay. If you had to pursue an alternate career, what would it be? Other than filming? Other than filming. Take one decision. Take one too. Okay. I love take one I still miss and it. And you still do it? And I did. Few, few months last year, few months 
I did it online mm -hmm. because we had to. My brother had to close all the gym right, right, yeah. during the lockdown. Yeah. So he he knew that I was a perfect person to teach online. <laughs> so he chose me, and I was teaching online. I really perfect. loved it, and I had fun teaching online. I hope you can share the videos. On oh, definitely, me we'll, 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 we'll well. check it out too. Yeah. Okay, um, this is an interesting one. A thing about clients. This is this is about clients. So something mm. that a client demands that you don't like. Oh, or something I don't like. That something that you don't like clients demanding. Change, change, <laughs> change, change. I hate, I hate changing. <laughs> when client ask me to changes and changes and changes like hundred times. It really bothers me. I think a lot of uh, videographers and editors would agree to you on that. Yes, because you know, I, I don't have any problem with client changing and it is part of my job that to give a draft video and client to ask for some changes. I can't do a perfect video from the first... Fair. Uh, yeah, fair. fair. But my problem with some clients is when I give them the draft, they you know, take it privately and watch it just by himself and give me <laughs> to feedback like I just change this and that and then I will do them and he will go and watch it and happy now he will show it to the his manager <laughs> and his manager will watch it by himself and again ask for one changes and the manager will show to another manager and to the CEO and it never ends like <laughs> how so hard is it to get it in one so shot it's so difficult yeah so that's why I say to my client please the whole let the whole company watch it <laughs> And give me one hundred. on a present. Dish. Yes, give me one hundred feedback at once. <laughs> I will do them all, but don't give me one feedback in one hundred times. That is impossible. <laughs> the I, pain I, of filmmakers. Ah, <laughs> it, it pains a lot. You know, like it takes a month to finish one editing sometimes because of that I kind of. Right, so now you know what not to ask from Sultan. He was very honest, and we we <laughs> do feel his pain. Yeah. <laughs> ah. Alright, so well, Sultan, this was a very honest conversation that we okay. had and I had a lot of fun and I learned so many new things and oh, really? all the very best. I, I did, I'm still discovering new things about <laughs> you every day. Uh -huh. So, and all the very best for your Thank filmmaking you. and you. Uh, you. do not ever leave break dancing because I think that's how we all remember Sultan. Yes, uh, of course, whenever I get chance, sometimes get invited to be a judge. So I remember once I was a judge in a break dance event but the crowd knew me, so they were, we want Sultan. We... So I had to perform as well. <laughs> so, I, of course, when I get some opportunities, I do perform as well, still, like I do break dance. Absolutely. And it's inside me. It's always going to be a part of you. Taekwondo is inside me. I cannot stop doing this too. All right, so on that note, I'm going to sign out for a couple of days because I'm going to be away. But Flora is going to be back on Sunday to take care of you. Make sure you tune into Midday Update at 2 p.m. And you'll be watching Flora at 8 p.m. on Sunday. Stay tuned and keep watching TTV.